This is the sound of the Eastern Naga. The people of the West, if at all know the Naga in India. In 1963 they fought for their own state of Nagaland. Few people know, that the Naga also populate an entire administrative district in northwestern Burma. At the end of the colonial period, India and Burma drew a line of demarcation right through the land of the free villages, which soon became a permanent border. In all respects, the Naga area in Myanmar is the most inaccessible. Even the Burmese will agree, that another land begins beyond the Chindwin River. If you cross the Chindwin in Kamti, the first route leads to the small town of La, six hours away. The administration of the Naga self-administered zone is located there. A travel permit is not necessary, but Ever since the Burmese claimed the Naga's land, they have had to accept, that it was not a gift without resistance. Tatmador and Assam rifles work hand in hand along the border, to keep so-called Naga rebels at bay. The Naga New Year festival is quite a new creation. It's a kind of national event like the Hornbill Festival of the Naga in India. During the dictatorship, the festival offered the Naga an opportunity to get in touch with their government. The government was able to demonstrate its power here and unite the different groups under its Burmese umbrella. During the Naga New Year festival, the people from the villages show themselves in all their beauty. Every stranger now suspects, how rich this culture once was. On the Burmese side of the Potkai range we find villages of the great tribes, Makuri, Tangkul, Para, Gokar, Tangshan, Kiamungan, Konyak, Mucham, Haimi, Lainong and many more sub-tribes. But life for mountain farmers is tough. Everyone is busy making a living. The day begins with the first crowing of the cock. Naga villages are small democratic, self-governing republics. First and foremost, people identify with their village. The focus is on an aristocratic village founder family, surrounded by the family clans. The elders of the clans, together with their leader, manage the village and ensure law and order.
fetching water, collecting firewood, everything, that people need for life, they produce themselves or take it from nature. Storage facilities are located outside a village. If a fire breaks out, the crop will be protected. A new rice storage is being built. What would the Naga be, without his Tao? Now it's dry, the women collect firewood. The old couple from Sakpia have to hurry before the rainy season begins. Learning by doing. Knowledge grows from the game. Yeah. 
Even when there is nothing to do in the field, the work never runs out. Time for lunch. As before every meal, the women separate the rice from its husks. The village father, or king, as the Burmese translate it, got his tribute from the villagers today. Nobody spends money on cups, a piece of bamboo or an old beer can, that's enough. The architectural style of the houses differs in the different regions. The availability of building materials plays a role, the geographical location and of course, the tradition of the tribe. In the south, large monolites testify to the merits of a homeowner. Depending on their geographic location, the tribes use different cultivation methods. When work in the fields begins, only small children and old people can be found in the villages. Because the fields are often one day's walk away from the village, the families move to field huts while working there. The Nagu area is impassable and mountainous. Dense jungle alternates with extensive areas that are traditionally cultivated in jump fields, an eight-year change between different cultures, fallow land and new plantings.
What looks like destruction and annihilation here, is a method of agriculture that has been tried and tested for centuries. And if the population does not grow, it's even sustainable. Here our way led directly over a jump field. The time of year determines the work on the jump fields. Festivals and rituals focus on sowing, field cleaning and harvesting. Those who work hard, can also rest. During Angan Log, people pray for rain. And the rain is coming. Now the eternal cycle of sowing and harvesting begins again. Hard to see that something is growing in the field. This is opium poppy, it has already been harvested. In addition to working in the fields, hunting not only provides extra meat, but is also great fun. A successful hunter is held in high regard in the village. That meat, which cannot be given away or consumed immediately, is preserved over the fire. It's a bit like the Stone Age. Mm. 
Khôi lò, khôi lò đừng tiêu cơ hoàn nhập đường lão xin mừng Sớm trăm tới Nó là đi Sớm tiêu hoàn tạm A Hunter's Pride Buffalo, mitten or pig skulls indicate great merit festivals. While the men take care of the meat, women and children collect beetles on the river bank. And the headhunters? Yes, they still exist. Chopping off their heads from one another? Those days are over. There are enough other challenges today. What to do with the garbage? The long-awaited modern life brings new challenges for the small town of La. Do we need a street lamp here? Or is access to a painkiller more important to us? The evening comes quickly, the families eat together. Time for stories. But one of the greatest challenges is the unity of the clans, villages and tribes, confidence in their own strength. Only the Naga, by themselves, can know what is good for them. In the future they will live as they have chosen.